We're recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at 10, yes, 10 pairs of AKG K-Series headphones. We've got five closed back and five open back ranging in price from $65 to just over $1,800. I also reviewed these in our A Family of AKG K-Series headphones compared in the September 2024 issue of Recording Magazine. AKG started in Vienna, Austria in 1947. In addition to its extensive microphone legacy, which you can also learn about in our AKG C-Series of Microphones Compared video here on our YouTube channel, the company launched its very first headphone model, the AKG K120DYN, in 1949. The K120DYN used diaphragms made from pressed granules of Trollatool, essentially an early pellet-like plastic. These aren't an authentic pair of K120DYNs, but as you can see from the photo, they are stylistically quite similar. Can you imagine recording or, or listening to music on these? Luckily, 10 years later, AKG would release the world's first over-ear open-back headphones, the AKG K50. While rudimentary in sound and appearance compared to 21st century headphone offerings, they became hugely popular. If you look around, you can still find working models online today. After flirting with various headphone designs over the following years, it was the now iconic semi-open-back K240 introduced in 1976 that set the mold for many AKG headphones to come. Although not included in this roundup, two variants of the K240 remain in the lineup today. The K240 Studio and the K240 Mark II. The current AKG K-Series includes 21 models in a variety of styles from the classic, to the ultra modern. Today we're going to look at 10 of them. This includes the entry level K72, K92, K182, and K371. Then we have the industry standard K271 Mark II, which best represents the long standing classic AKG studio headphone ethos started by the K240. In the mid range step up tier, we have the K702, K701, and K712. And finally, on the boutique end of the spectrum, we have the K812 and K872. Beyond the classic wire-framed K240-esque appearance of six of the models, and the fact that all but one pair feature large circumoral ear cup designs, beyond a threaded eighth inch to quarter inch adapter, there's very little uniformity among the AKG K-Series when it comes to accessories and accoutrements. Before we dig in, it's worth pointing out that AKG offers a handy, interactive chart to compare the features, specs, accessories, and suggested uses of up to four models at a time on its website. We begin with the most affordable model currently in the AKG K-Series, the K72. The K72 is an over-ear closed back headphone featuring a 40 millimeter driver with a 16 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency response, 112 dB sensitivity, and a 32 ohm impedance. The K72 is finished in black and silver with 4-inch plastic ear cups fixed to a thin black metal frame. The plastic floating headband is self-adjusting and like most AKG headphones, the thick padded vinyl covered ear cups are replaceable. Left and right are noted by a large, obvious L and R on the inner foam of the ear cup and the 3 meter cable is fixed and non-removable. The K72 comes in a printed cardboard box with no accessories beyond the threaded adapter. While the entry-level K72 is quite economical in its construction, it's actually more robust than its thin wire frame and plastic build convey. Thanks to the classic cushy AKG ear pads and self-adjusting headband, it's very comfortable on the ear with an effortless fit. The K72 exhibits a decent clamp that's not too tight yet stays firmly put. I would have zero issues wearing these for an extended period of time. Sonically, the first time I tried the K72, I was more than a little impressed. The soundstage has a respectable width and the mids are well seated, although perhaps a touch underdefined. The top end is slightly compressed and smooth, and high end ear fatigue will not be an issue with the K72. 
My favorite part, however, is its full kicking low end. The low 32 ohm impedance plays well with smartphones, laptops, audio interfaces of all types and more, making the K72 a great general purpose headphone. While many of my descriptions seem to paint the K72 as maybe a little sonically rounded or not overly neutral or even hi-fi, they're actually a very respectable set of workhorse style headphones, especially when you consider their modest $65 price tag. I would have zero qualms using the K72 in a session or grabbing four or five pairs for clients to use in my studio for tracking. Next we come to the also very affordable AKG K92 headphones. For all intents and purposes, the AKG K92 is the exact same set of headphones as the K72 with the same general looks, build, and design. So what does one get for about $10 more? Gold accents and an expanded sonic profile. The K92 has a 16 Hz to 22 kilohertz frequency response and 113 dB sensitivity. As such, it presents as a gently clearer and more open sounding version of its sibling. While still not a crisp headphone, the top end and mid range are more defined. On the flip side, the K92 is a touch less forceful in the lows and low mids than the K72. Either way, the K92 is still an easy headphone to recommend in the sub $100 headphone world. And for many users, the slight bump in price will be worth it for the added clarity and definition. Introduced in 2015, the K182 stands alone as a very modern, almost un AKG like member of the K series. It offers the chunkiest frame of the bunch with the smallest 3.5 inch round, cushy on ear rather than around the ear ear cups. The K182 also features a collapsible design with a 3 meter detachable cable. The K182 is also the first model in our roundup to come with a cloth carrying pouch. The K182 has a 50 millimeter driver, a 10 Hz to 28 kHz frequency response, 112 dB sensitivity, and a 32 ohm impedance. Build wise, they're even more robust than the first two models, and of all of the K series offerings, this is the one I would feel the most comfortable folding in the cups, placing in its bag, and tossing in a backpack. As long as you're comfortable with an on ear design rather than an around the ear design, and to be fair, despite their smaller ear cup size, these do fit around my ears. They're generally comfortable with a firm, solid feel. The sound of the K182 is all about a low punch, a neutral yet polite lower mid range, a very forward upper mid range, and detailed highs. Whereas the K72 and the K92 both offer a touch of width, the K182 exhibits a tight, firm, almost forceful presentation that nicely highlights things like vocals and electric guitar. If you like your kick drum punchy and your snare drum to have a visceral crack, the K182 is a solid choice. In use, I did enjoy the K182 at moderate volumes rather than cranked, where its presence push could be a bit overwhelming for my personal taste. The remaining seven headphones have previously been covered in the pages of Recording Magazine over the years, so we're going to consider the previous reviewer's thoughts as well as my contemporary observations. Our next headphone is the AKG K371BT. This is part of the next generation of AKG K300 series of headphones. These feature a robust, compact, streamlined look with fully foldable oval ear cups. The K371BT model also adds wireless Bluetooth connectivity. The K371BT offers an impressive 5 Hz to 40 kHz frequency response, 114 dB sensitivity, and a 32 ohm impedance. It also sports a 50 mm driver. Despite its streamlined appearance, the K371BT is actually the third heaviest headphone in our roundup. However, they're actually quite comfortable to wear even after long hours of use. Despite the oval ear cups, they fit nicely around rather than on top of your ear. When we reviewed the original K371 in our November 2019 issue, alongside the also new at the time and more traditional K275, our reviewer felt that the K371 pushes vocals a little more forward than the K275 in my initial comparisons due to what I hear is a slight upper mid boost and possibly the fact that they have less bass than the K275. Ultimately, he felt the K371 to be well suited as a mix reference tool. 
Sonically, the K371BT is the most neutral and focused of the models so far. It still has a nice, strong low end, but it's more polite and seated than the thick K72 or punchy K182. The best way I can describe it is, with the K182 you hear the kick drum. With the K371BT, you hear the kick drum more as part of the whole mix. The K371BT balances a nice tight focus with an even, comfortable soundstage. While not designed or billed as a flat reference style headphone per se, nothing in the mix feels exaggerated or pushed back. Even on bright, aggressive music, the top end never feels brittle or harsh. I actually think these would make a great tracking headphone in the studio, and I actually have a friend who plays bass and she uses them on stage rather than in-ear monitors. The addition of Bluetooth also means that the K371BT can travel with you for casual listening and even remote laptop editing sessions. The K371BT comes with a choice of detachable audio cables, a USB charging cable, and a cloth bag. Now we come to one of the most traditional, classic, and popular models in the AKG K series. The K271 has been part of the AKG family and a near ubiquitous recording studio staple for almost 24 years. The good news is, is that there's no sonic difference between the original model and the Mark II versions. The only difference is some accent color variants and the accessories. The K271 Mark II has a 16 Hz to 28 kHz frequency response, 104 dB sensitivity, a 55 ohm impedance, and it employs a 30 mm driver, which is the smallest of this group. Visually, the K271 Mark II is old school AKG K series all the way. A dual wire metal frame, a self adjusting and self muting vinyl headband, large, sturdy plastic 4 inch circular ear cups, and big, cushy, swappable vinyl ear pads. Part of the expanded Mark II accessory package is a set of optional felt ear pads and the option of a 3 meter straight or 5 meter coiled cable. We reviewed the K271 in September 2003. And when our previous editor reviewed the K702 in 2013, which we'll get to shortly, he reminded readers that he still found the K271 to be his favorite mid-priced headphone even 10 years later. But going back to our original 2003 review, he found the negative 37 dB rated isolation offered an eerie silence with no music playing, which of course highlights this headphone's popularity as a studio tracking headphone to this day. He found the high end on cymbals had detail and jingle with no hint of strain. Bass was there in profusion, detailed and punchy, and the mids sat where they should with no overemphasis or scooping. I'm struck by his rather poetic descriptive of the K271 when used as a mixing or editing headphone. When listening to a stripped down, mostly acoustic album, he commented that the K271 let us taste every subtlety of this near naked recording. The slightly sibilant solo vocals, analog tape saturation on overdubbed harmonies, elevated noise floor on the piano tracks originally recorded at low levels, and so on. Based on his recommendation, the original K271 was my main headphone of choice in the studio for the better part of a decade. Revisiting them here in the context of nine other headphones, I was struck by their neutrality, open soundstage, and extended clarity. That said, they do present as the brightest headphone of the bunch. They're toppy, but nicely not harsh. There is a slight mid-range bump that can be a tad boxy on some tracks, such as those with forward aggressive guitars, and the bass, well defined, can be a tad subtle to modern ears used to hyped, thumping headphones. Now all of that might sound like an indictment against the K271 Mark II, but actually it stands to affirm the earlier observations that they are a stellar studio tool of the highest order that lets you zero in on the details of a mix. Funny enough, even after 15 years of familiarity with the K271, I'm still not sure how I feel about the self-muting switch that kicks in when you take them off. It may be awesome to combat bleed when somebody leaves a set unattended during a session, but for this roundup, it did make burning them in and quick headphone comparisons a tad tricky. Next, we come to three pairs of headphones that can best be described as a variation on a theme. While each one sports a distinct color scheme, they share the same body and open back design. You might be curious why I didn't pick models that were maybe a bit more different, but it's because 
These are some of the most popular headphones in the AKG K series, and I thought it would be fun to highlight their similarities and differences. All three models do not stray far from the K271 school. With a dual wire armature, self adjusting leatherette headband, four inch open metal mesh ear cups, and large velour ear pads. The K701, K702, and the K712 Pro each have a 10 Hz to 39.8 kHz frequency response, 105 dB sensitivity, and a 62 ohm impedance. This means each K7 open back will work with a laptop, a basic audio interface, or a quarter inch equipped smartphone. However, each model benefits even more from a dedicated headphone amp, a high output equipped audio interface, or a dedicated DAC. First up, the K702 is dressed in black and silver and sports a 45 millimeter driver. It comes with a single three meter detachable cable and adapter. The limited edition 65th anniversary K702 was reviewed in January 2013. On the comfort scale, our reviewer found that the K702 simply does not fatigue the listener through extended wear. On its sound, he said that the transient response was brilliantly fast, making treble clean and clear, and the bass extension was extraordinary. In that same review, our publisher, Tom Hawley, an audiophile and a true headphone aficionado, made a rare appearance in the pages of Recording Magazine. He felt that the K702 improved upon the bass response of the more expensive, earlier K701, stating that the low end is all there now solid without being exaggerated or in your face. After the review, we found out that the anniversary model came with special ear pads whose seal extended the bass frequency of the anniversary model slightly over the stock K702. Now, the anniversary model is long gone, so I can neither compare, confirm, or deny that. Or can I? Stay tuned. Either way, the current K702 offers a wonderful, deep-reaching, yet unhyped low-end that serves as a perfect foundation for the open, neutral, clear, and airy soundstage of these headphones. All in all, the K702 is a wonderful, detailed, and almost transparent-sounding set of mid-priced open-back headphones. Next, we move to the K701, which is a step up from the K702 and the only model in this trio to use a 50 millimeter driver. The K701 is, in my opinion, the sexiest, yes, I said the sexiest, set of headphones in the AKG family. The white porcelain ear cups with chrome grills and accents sit on a gray wire frame. Silver bands with white attach the brown leather self-adjusting headband, and on this model, the vintage gray 3 meter cable is attached and terminates in a quarter inch connector with an eighth inch adapter included. To complete the premium package, the K701 comes with its own display stand. The K701 was initially reviewed in May of 2008. I concur wholeheartedly with our reviewer who simply surmised that these are beautiful headphones. They really are, especially visually. Regarding their sonic response, our reviewer pointed out that the K701 headphones sound neutral with no shortage of resolution and detail, but they don't exhibit as much energy in the lows as some other open air headphones. Of course, this aligns with our publisher's thoughts that I mentioned earlier during the K702 review. Our K701 reviewer did go on to point out, however, though some may find it exaggerated, I quite enjoy the wide sound staging and pinpoint accuracy. I concur with these previous statements. Overall, the bass response can be described as polite. It's there, you can hear it, but it doesn't reach down quite as low as the K702. In that sense, the K701 is similar to my thoughts on the K271 Mark II. The K701 might not be as much of a kick back and enjoy the music audiophile listening experience as the K702, or as we're about to see, the K712 Pro. However, if you want to hear every detail in a track with a gorgeous, wide, open air presentation, it's hard to go wrong with the K701. And did I mention how visually classy and stunning these are? 
Now we come to the pinnacle of the K7 models, the K712 Pro. The K712 Pro is black with deep orange accents with a similar fit and finish to the K701. The K712 Pro includes a pair of straight and coiled detachable 3 meter cables and a premium storage bag. Despite the obvious similarities in style, the K712 Pro does offer some gentle sonic differences from the other models. And here's a fun fact. The extra special 65th anniversary edition K702 that we mentioned earlier, after a quick wardrobe change, has been reborn as the K712 Pro. I don't know about you, but I love a good plot twist. That means that all of the really nice things that our publisher Tom and our reviewer said about the previous K702 anniversary model, they apply here to the K712 Pro. If you're keeping track, this means that the K712 Pro does offer a bit more heft in the low end over the stock K702, which also has more low end reach than the K701. This headphone exhibits a rich, balanced low end that combines with a width clarity, and presence that truly makes the K712 Pro worthy of its Pro suffix. The K712 Pro is a great choice for discerning mixing engineers and mastering engineers alike. We reviewed the K712 Pro alongside the K812 in March of 2014. I'm going to let our former editor who did the review have the final say about the K712 Pro. If it's possible for a headphone to diplomatically balance genuine listening beauty with an almost microscopic level of unforgiving detail, the K712 Pro provides that listening experience. Now we come to our two final headphone offerings in this roundup. Both models represent the top of the AKG headphone line, and they are both truly next level. The K812 and K872 are essentially the same in terms of their build, body, specs, and even price. The only difference is that the K812 is open back, while the K872 is a closed back model. Build wise, the K812 and K872 are industrial design works of art that elevate the foundational AKG K series elements to new heights. The dual frame structure is thick and rigid with a robust angular appearance. The leather and nylon mesh headbands adjust with locking AKG logo push buttons. The 4 inch AKG ear cups, mesh on the open back K812, all but float inside of a pair of multi tilt circular armatures. The thick plush leather ear cups offer a thin outer flap that adds an extra level of seal to your ear and hugs the contours of your ear and jawline. Despite their size and weight, the ear cups are actually quite comfortable, and when properly adjusted, they completely avoid any pressure points on the upper jawline. Unlike the miniature XLR style connectors primarily found on the AKG K series models, the 3 meter cable attaches with an instrumentation grade Limo connector. Each model uses a 53 millimeter driver and an ultra light two layer voice coil and 1.5 Tesla magnets. They boast a wide frequency response of 5 Hz to 54 kHz, 110 dB sensitivity, and a surprisingly low 26 ohm impedance. So while these are going to sound stellar with a high-end headphone amp, they're also going to sound stellar on pretty much any listening device. Sticking with our open back theme, the K812 comes in a large cloth-covered display box. In addition to the included cable and cloth case, it includes a full-scale wooden headphone stand. Married with the stated extended frequency range, the K812 also exhibits a gloriously flat and neutral frequency response. While we often translate those words as clinical and boring, and while the K812 and K872 are devoid of any real hype, if the music you're listening to has deep, rich, detailed lows, well, then you're going to hear those lows in all of their deep, rich detail. On the flip side, those lows will not come forward and thump you like many hyped or bass voiced headphones. It's the same with the even wide mids and the high end, which is a nice balance of airy and crystalline. Simply put, you just hear it all, the good and the bad. To reiterate, the K812 does not sweeten, round, or sugarcoat anything. As mentioned, we reviewed the K812 in March of 2014, and our reviewer put it best. 
The remarkably flat and neutral frequency response and amazing detail turn out to be a two-edged sword. I can't imagine a better tool for picking apart tracks, bar none. But picking apart tracks is what you will find yourself doing, whether you want to or not. Moving to our final entry, the K872, as mentioned, its design, build, and specs are nearly identical to the K812. The difference being that the K872 are a closed back headphone. One thing that surprised me is, unlike the K812, which came with this cool headphone stand, the K872 comes with a hard shell carrying case that folds out and doubles as a display stand, although it does take up a bit of extra space compared to the wooden head style stands. Sonically, these are cut from the same cloth as the K812, and perhaps more than any other headphone that I've ever used, side-by-side -side listening really shows off the relaxed depth of an open-back headphone compared to the more focused, isolated soundstage of a closed-back design. Not that I would tell you to run out and buy a headphone of this price point for general everyday tracking duties, but the isolation of the K872 is certainly good enough that you could. And if you are, like me, an engineer who tracks clients in a one-room style studio or in the control room, the K872 would be a wonderful choice to help you hear and compensate for sonic anomalies as they occur. When we reviewed the K872 in 2016, Possibly, the biggest takeaway was that our reviewer found them to be detailed to the level of microscopic accuracy, making for an impeccable editing tool in the digital realm, especially if spectral editing, audio cleanup, and restoration are in your job description. Again, while not a bass-forward headphone, the self-contained nature of the K872 yields a bass response that is gently more bulbous than the open K812. The same can be said of its high end. The closed back nature of the K872 keeps your focus squarely on the littlest and most delicate of high-end details because they're not masked by mingling with environmental sounds leaking into your mix. This makes them a supreme editing tool. However, as it was pointed out in our 2016 review, if you're sensitive to the artifacts from lossy codec compression, either from streaming or MP3s, the K872 might not be your best friend there. At just shy of $2,000, the K812 and K872 are seriously priced on ear investments. However, considering their use as ultra critical yet stellar sounding mix tools, that price might be worth the time it saves when crafting and prepping a mix, especially in critical mastering situations and post production. I hope you found these comparisons and considerations of the AKG K series headphones helpful. Thanks for sticking with me. I know going through 10 pairs of headphones is a lot. You might be wondering, which ones are my favorites? Of course, it's easy to jump right to the top of the class and say the K812 or K872. And yes, those are really, really, really nice headphones. However, I'm also really impressed with what the K72 had to offer for a mere $65. I've also been a big fan of the more modern K371 since its initial release. And the addition of Bluetooth on the K371BT makes it even more versatile. Finally, this is my first time ever hearing the K712 Pro, and they are just a fantastic, comfortable option for enjoying music. They could easily become my go-to daily driver, so to speak. If you want to learn more about any of the headphones or microphones that AKG offers, be sure to stop by akg.com. And don't forget to check out that handy comparison tool that I mentioned earlier. Also, don't forget to check out my family of AKG K-Series of Headphones Compared Roundup in the September 2024 issue of Recording Magazine. If you liked this video review, be sure to give us the thumbs up below. Better yet, subscribe to Recording's YouTube page for more video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Then, stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can also subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 37th year. We'll see you soon.